Hello folks. Today we're going to explain how to replace the cylinder walls and the wiper rings on a Anver PMP 4.3 HP 116 vacuum pump. Uh, what you're going to need to do is uh, purchase a repair kit from Anver Corporation. At the end of the video will give you all that information to be able to uh, get in contact with them. Uh, but it basically what you're looking at is a uh, repair kit that's going to consist of the heads, which are right here, the top parts, along with the cylinders and also the wiper rings. Um, it's fairly simple to replace. There's a couple little tricks that we use uh, to rebuild these pumps and uh, we'll get into that in a few minutes. A shot of the tools that we're going to need to do the repair. Got a quarter inch impact driver, We've got a uh, battery operated drill that has a uh, screw setting with a clutch so you can put the uh, screws back in all at the same torque. Nine volt battery or something that's 5 eighths equivalent. Loctite 271, Phillips screwdriver, pick tool for the O-rings, uh, basically a manifold assembly uh, with an Anver check valve, that's important that you have the check valve in line, VLS 08, or a Anver 0 to 30 vacuum gauge, compressed air, and a Phillips bit, and an H4 Allen head bit. Um, this is off of a repair job and um, we basically have our check valve installed, we've got our muffler installed and I've got a, uh, a VLS 08 um, plugged into it so we can see what kind of reading we're going to get. Turn the pump on. As you can see, we're well below 24 inches. These pumps will gain a little bit as they warm up a little bit. Might be able to get 21, there we go, 21 inches. Still three inches below the minimum. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and take this thing apart and check out the cylinders and uh, we'll go ahead and replace them. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is take the capacitor off. Simple screw and move it. And then basically, you got a series of bolts for the heads. Again, we like to use the impact. see these are the cylinders and they definitely have some some wear in there you can see that wear there take the other one off and what happens you get any kind of uh, particles in here if you don't have proper filtration and um, it almost acts like sandpaper and again, these pistons go up and down to uh, create your vacuum. Okay, now what we're going to do is remove the uh, cup seal plates so we can uh, replace the cup seals. And with that, we also use an impact with a Phillips bit. It's kind of real important that you get a good bite on these uh, Phillips screws so you, don't, so you don't strip them. The impact works well because it gives it a quick jolt you know, to pop those screws off the Loctite because they do Loctite these things in. And 
and that's basically your cup seal. We'll clean up the uh, cup seal plates before we put it all back together. You can see this is a uh, had a lot of debris in it. Yeah, you can tell by the heads they're they're pretty dirty. So we'll clean all that up. These are going to get replaced anyway, but we want to make sure all the stuff that we're not going to replace gets cleaned up so we don't have any debris in there at all. Okay, we've uh, cleaned up all the parts and we actually took a little bit of compressed air and blew out the inside of the motor and uh, inside the pistons. And um, the other thing we've done is uh, we've taken the O-rings off the tubes. Uh, these tubes go from the tops of the manifold heads there and um, they tend to get brittle and dry and uh, so we just pull them off. What I'd use is just a little pick tool. Um, doesn't matter if you destroy the old ones, you're just going to throw them away. But take a pick tool and pop the old ones off and the, other, the new ones that come with the kit will basically roll right onto the tubes. This helps uh, get a better seal between the two chambers. And then uh, the other advice I've got is um, you know, when you go to install these, you may want to uh, put a little Windex or even a little bit of water on here before you put them in. It kind of just gives it a little bit of lubrication uh, so you don't cut the uh, O-rings as you're installing into the uh, holes that they go into. Um, so next we're going to just go ahead and start rebuilding this. Okay, now we're going to show you how to replace the piston cup seals. Um, a lot of people do have difficulty in this portion of uh, the repair. Um, and basically one of the tricks of the trade is using a 9 volt battery to basically simply lock down that piston while you're working on the opposite piston. And uh, I won't use the newer plates, these are the mid plates that you take out from the top head assembly. And uh, take a couple of the screws and just basically lock down that piston so the thing is not bouncing back and forth. And it makes the other side stay to the top where you can actually get the uh, screws in there pretty simple once you get the seal in. So once we tighten that up, as you can see, that's locked to the top. Now we're going to take the uh, cylinder walls and there's two sides to it. You've got a kind of a tapered side and you've got one that has a step. You want to take the step and always face it upwards. Take the cup seal, the cup seal plate to line up the holes that the two screws go into and just give it a push in there. Sometimes it might shift off a little bit so you can kind of regroup and make sure you're getting it centered. There we go. And as you can see she's in there pretty good. Take a little bit of press the test here, pull that off. And then this is where the Loctite comes in. We're going to take the screw that goes in there, throw a little bit of Loctite on there. And get her in there. This is where I would not use an impact. You don't need to, the Loctite will do all the work once you tighten them up. Is there tight? There you got one done. Now you just repeat the process for the other side. And you know again making sure you get no debris. <laughs> important. You got to keep these clean. All right and uh, basically repeat the same thing on the other side. We'll be back in a sec. Okay we got both cup seal plates installed now. Uh, we've put the screws in with the Loctite. Now what we want to do is just put in the uh, head plates. Those will just drop right in over the cylinders. That's what that step was that we talked about earlier. I want to make sure you just kind of lay up that uh, capacitor. And drop the heads on. Bring it self-align. 
Now we like to use a uh, screw gun. I put it in the screw setting. I put it on 10. And what that's going to do is automatically torque those all the same. we want to do is just put that screw back in to hold the capacitor. You don't want to tighten it up too much. You might break that uh, tab off the capacitor just enough to keep it from wiggling around. And that's it. We'll come right back and we'll throw the VLS-08 on it. We'll check the vacuum and we should get over 24 inch minimum that we need. Okay, we've got it back together with the VLS-08 hooked up in line with the vacuum. We made sure we got our muffler on, we made sure we got our check valve on. Then we go ahead and uh, turn the pump on, see what we get. You see we're getting a lot more vacuum. 26, 26.1. This is really good. This can go back on to a vacuum lifter. Just make sure all your filtration is in place along with uh, you should change your elements on that filter periodically. Uh, again, you want to call up Anver Corporation and ask for the RK-HP120 repair kit and then follow this video and you shouldn't have any problems. Just contact Anver, they'll be glad to help you out.